Grace and peace be unto you, from the God our Father, from God our Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ. If you will, please open your Bible, the book of Ephesians. Be reading from chapter one, verse three, until verse thirteen. Ephesians, chapter one, verse um, three to thirteen. It will be page 1170, pardon, 1169 in the Pew Bible. Thus says the word of the living God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heaven places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons of Jesus Christ to himself, according to the pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, forgiveness of sins, according to the uh, riches of his grace, which he made to bound toward us in all wisdom and prejudice, and prudence, pardon me, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he um, proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together and one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth. In him, in him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we uh, who first trust in Christ should be praised of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come again before thy holy presence, we are here together, gathered together as thy beloved congregation, and we ask thee, O Lord, to uh, bestow upon us a gift to understand thy word, to live upon it, to trust it, to believe that we have been predestined for a reason, for thy glory, to glorify thy holy name, O Lord, to praise thee. We thank you for all, and you ask for thy help so we can understand the holy text. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you like theology? I bet you do. But I doubt it. Do you like to be involved in theological fights regarding this or that issue? But let me tell you, theology is very important. It helps us to understand the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ and also to understand his Father as he was revealed in the scriptures. Theology helps to comfort our heart in times like this, in which we have to rely upon the word of the Lord to survive. In times in which we have to walk not by sight, but by faith. Theology helps us to understand what's about to happen in the everlasting life and what's happening here with us. 
theology helps us to understand how one ought to live this life. Everything in life is about knowledge. Knowledge of God, knowledge of Christ, knowledge of oneself, and knowledge of thy neighbor. So, it seems to be the case here that Paul is trying to do. He's trying to encourage the Ephesians to embrace theology, but in a very pastoral way. Uh, do not get me wrong. Paul is very fascinating, and he loves theology. But he speaks as a pastor. He's trying to get his message across. He's trying to encourage his people about the Trinitarian work of salvation. How each and every person of God's head work together to comfort us in moment, moments like this. How we ought to embrace God's word and love each and every one of God's uh, persons. Each and every person of God's head. How we ought to understand that only a theology, a theology of the Trinity will help us to uh, embrace our love for each and every person of God's head. So, we have here sort of a Trinitarian division, if you will. To be honest, I learned that when I was 10, and I'm pretty sure you can do that too. Paul divided, according to my understanding, this passage in three main points or parts. Chosen by the Father, redeemed by the Son, and sealed by the Holy Spirit. Chosen by the Father, redeemed by the Son, and sealed with the Holy Spirit. Paul starts by saying that um, all sorts of blessings have been bestowed upon us. It is interesting, um, as far as I'm concerned, um, English and a few other languages um, will show you that one must bless the Lord. In Portuguese, we do not say that. We do not dare to bless the Lord. But if one is to curse the Lord, one is to assume that one could also bless the Lord. Hallowed be thy name, just blessed be thy name. Or as they say in a daily morning Jewish prayer. Baruch atah Adonai. Blessed be thy name or blessed be thy name. So we do bless God. And we are also blessed by God. Blessings from the Father. Blessings from the Son. And blessings from the Holy Spirit. We have been chosen before the foundation of the world. God has already chose you and me, you and I, to be part of his kingdom. Before we are even born, in Psalm 139, 137, other Psalms, we know that God has already seen a substance without form. And yet, God knew already whom we were. He has predestined us to be part of his kingdom, to be his children. The Puritans used to say that one must keep in mind the idea of uh, going to heaven, not because one wants to escape hell, but rather because one loves the Lord. And he has predestined us to love him. To praise his name. We have all sorts of um, needs, and everybody knows that. Private needs, personal needs. But those needs should not keep us away from understanding the purpose which upon 
we were brought up to serve the Lord, to praise him, to acknowledge his power, his glory. We have been chosen before the foundation of the world, not in the mid, in the middle, not after, right before. Everything that comes to pass, as I have mentioned this morning, was decreed by the Lord. But with the regard to salvation, um, predestination is applied to. One has been up, one has been predestined to spend his or her whole eternity in heaven with the his or her beloved Father. We have been chosen to be holy. We have been chosen to be blameless. We have been chosen in Christ, and we have been, uh, we have been chosen. In, in love. So Paul here, this, per, this first section, is preparing the way for the works of the Son. Being chosen in Christ means that he is the one who's in charge of our lives. He is the one who uh, brought us close to him. To make him, to, make him, to be made by him, his children, to glorify his name, to be his. This morning I, I mentioned that, I remember that I didn't mention the idea of um, uh, blood and sacrifice in the Garden of Eden. There is no redemption without blood. That's why instead of a giving uh, fig leaves to Adam and Eve to cover themselves, God used the uh, animal skin to cover them. But, that, but that's not the point. The point is, there is no redemption without blood. And God has chosen us in Christ who will lay down, lay down his life for the sake of those whom God has chosen. That sort of uh, um, redemption is limited. That sort of uh, atonement is limited. We have been predestined for adoption. Um, I'm not adopted, nor I wish I was. <laughs> but if I was, I'd be happy anyway. We are all adopted. We all uh, became part of a... a God's family in Christ. But we are not um, less important. Of course, we're not the prototokos, the first loved and begotten, as John mentions in chapter 1, verse 18. Only the begotten Son of God reveals him, makes him visible in one sense. We're not the begotten ones, but we have been predestined in Christ. And therefore, the Lord loves us. We have been predestined according to God's will. Wasn't man's will. Wasn't man's family's desire to do any sort of uh, atonement for his uh, um, past relatives was only uh, um, based upon the Lord's will. He has chosen us to be part of his family, to be his adopted children in Christ. And for Christ's honor, Christ is the one who has been honored, even though he had to die and take our place on the cross. For him to be honored and for us to be saved. We have been predestined for his glorious grace. We have been predestined because he was willing to bless us. Sometimes I wonder why the Lord has predestined us. Because we're not better than sinners out there. There is nothing in us that could be seen by God. Could make um, God suffer and 
and, and be willing to choose us. He only did so because he wanted to do it. I know each and every one of us has or has known or knows someone who is out there who doesn't know the Lord. And we know that the person, maybe if that person dies without Christ, will perish. We know that that person may or may not be predestined. What has caused us to preach the gospel is not certainty that everybody is going to be saved. But the uncertainty that we do not know, but we have to rely upon the Lord and rest upon him. He may or may not save someone. But that should not discourage us to preach the gospel. In Romans chapter 9, verse 13, um, Paul says that Jacob I loved, but this saw I hated. I, to this day, I do not comprehend, honestly, um, why some scholars, they tend to believe that there are sort, two sorts of uh, uh, distinct uh, uh, type of loves in, in God. One that predestines and one that sends you to hell. God either loves you or he hates you. Of course he loves his creation, but that love mentioned by Paul in Romans chapter 9, verse 13, it's not about redemption in the Son. Because he said, Jacob I love, but he saw, I hate it. So how could you say, how could you tell a friend of, he, of, of yours, uh, God loves you, but yet you're going to hell? <laughs> what sort of a love is that? Does he really love the unbelievers? Or is that sort of a semantics? You used to say that, oh, God has favored the unbeliever somewhat. Because after all, it rain comes to them. And they have been somewhat blessed. They have not been devoured yet. They're not dead yet. We have been predestined in the beloved. In the first uh, and foremost, the begotten Son of God. For his name's sake and for his glory. We know that we are sure, no, we are sure that God is out there working for us. And so is the Son and the Holy Spirit. Because the Son decided to die in our place. He decided to obey his father and because there is redemption through the blood. I also forgot to mention a lot of things I forgot to mention. <laughs> this morning was chapter 4 of Genesis, which is, is very important. Eve um, somewhat believed that Cain was a Messiah to be. So she truly believed in the um, promised Messiah of Genesis 3.15. And she says, not in English, of course. She says, Kanit ish et Adonai. I have gotten a man, the Lord. I really do not understand why King James, New King James, ESV, NIV, they were all translated with the help of the Lord. As if, uh, as if the text meant to say that. If you truly believe that her son could be the Messiah, to be, could be her savior. She knew that God had used blood to cover them, to use as, uh, to use as a, a, a signal or, or as a symbol of redemption. She knew of the promise. And as of right now, in verse chapter 4, verse 1, she makes his statement, I have gotten a man, the Lord. 
not with the help of the Lord. Of course, the Lord is the one we're going, who will go, uh, uh, the Lord is the one who will help the Messiah to come and to be um, bruised in his heel by the serpent in order to, to uh, fulfill the promises, the prophecies establishing the old covenant. But also she believed that Cain was the Messiah to be. But then Abel was born and she realized, maybe I have to wait a little while longer. Chosen by the Father, redeemed by the Son, and sealed with the Holy Spirit. As we have been chosen by God, redeemed by the Son, the Son's blood, the whole point was to forgive our, our uh, trespasses according to the riches of the grace, which were also bestowed upon us. So we can be wise, so we can have knowledge of God, of his Son, of the Holy Spirit, of ourselves. And this knowledge has been revealed in the whole scripture. This mystery, as Paul says in the, Old, in the New Testament, is a uh, revealed mystery. Everything that one needs to know about salvation has been revealed. There is no secret about that. Of course, we don't know whether or not Enoch was with God and he was not. If that meant to say that he ascended to heaven, we certainly know that. Not because of the Old Testament, but because Hebrews chapter 11. But there are all the mysteries that we ought to know only in heaven before the Lord. But what, we need, what one needs to know regarding salvation has been revealed, and it is clear. There is a man, he was promised in the Old Covenant. He came in a new dispensation, and he died, and he, was, uh, uh, he rose from the dead, and he saved people, and you have to submit yourself to, to him. You have to confess your sin. You have to uh, base your life upon his teachings. We know all this because uh, uh, God has already revealed them. What is necessary for one salvation has been revealed. The mystery has been revealed. And it was all according to his plan. And it was revealed in Christ. John Calvin um, um, talking about Jesus going to hell or descended, descended out in Inferno. He says that Jesus, hell was the cross. He suffered for us. Of course, John Calvin never meant to say that he really went to hell to take the keys of heaven, you know, of hell from, from, from the hands of the devil. He died for us. He suffered for us according to his father's plan. And he gave himself away. And everything that one ought to know about God has been revealed in Jesus. There was a Puritan, I'm not so sure if it was Thomas Godwin. But this Puritan said, one day when I arrive in heaven, I will straight look for Jesus. Because if Jesus is not there, so... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm speaking Portuguese right now. Heaven without Jesus is hell. So our hope relies upon this man's sacrifice. We do not rely upon ourselves to be saved. Imagine if for a second you could rely upon yourself to be saved. We sin every day for many reasons. Matter of fact, I, I guess I have just seen because I forgot <laughs> you know, I speak in English for a moment. We sin for many reasons all the time. We are not trustworthy people when it comes to our salvation. 
then why should one believe that one should rely on one's own ability to be saved? I have seen a lot of people, I have heard a lot of people saying over and over and over again, when that, ca when that day comes, I will assure you, I will have a conversation with the Lord. <laughs> to tell him what? <laughs> then there would be no time for such a conversation. We have been chosen by the Father, redeemed by the Son, and sealed with the Holy Spirit. Everything that's bad, that we know, that we do, it's because of our flesh. And what is good is because of the influence of the Holy Spirit. Can you possibly imagine that? The clothes you used to wear on today. The way you decided to uh, tie your shoes. I'm not saying that we are uh, a machine. That we cannot sin and do whatever we want without responsibility because God is in charge anyway. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that everything that we do that's good is for God's uh, namesake. And, it's because, and it is because of the work of the Holy Spirit. We have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and nobody can take us away from, from the Lord. We belong to him. We do not belong to ourselves. That's why when, you, when we do something good, we do so because of the work of the Holy Spirit. Encouraging us to do our Father's will. It is the Holy Spirit who called upon each and every one of you to be here today. Not today, today, but today as God's beloved congregation. He's the one who convinces of sin. He's the one who helps uh, uh, the message of the gospel to find its way towards your heart. He's the one who convinces you of your wrongdoings. He's the one who helps us understand the Holy Scripture. Don't we pray for illumination? Imagine, I, I've had um, many opportunities to be part of a sort of um, translation committee. And I have seen uh, gentlemen fighting over, over a iota and whether or not, uh, is, this, is this really what it seems to be? Uh, it, it isn't. Five, six, eight hours over whether or not. Is it really uh, goodness or love and kindness? Without the work of the Holy Spirit. Without being sealed by the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. It is the Holy Spirit who helps us to understand what Paul is doing here. Paul, in a very pastoral manner, tries to explain that the Ephesians do not belong to themselves. And therefore, they should not be preoccupied, concerned about their lives. Of course, you do not see this here in chapter 1. But later on, um, what Paul is teaching here would be needed. It is the Holy Spirit who helps us to uh, embrace the message of the gospel, to remember the psalm, So I've, I've mentioned to some people in this congregation that my grandpa was Jewish and he went to war. So he, he didn't know much of the scripture other than his uh, Bar Mitzvah text, the Old Testament, and the Psalm. And every time his life was in danger, he just 
quoted the Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But yet he did not understand what he was saying. Because he was not enlightened by the work of the Holy Spirit. He was not saved, as far as I'm concerned. The Holy Spirit helps us to understand, literally, what God meant to do in Christ's life when he decided to let his son be sacrificed for us. We cannot live without the help of the Holy Spirit. I will tell you this. Do not look for a sort of a special sound, a whisper in your ear. <laughs> there is none. We have the scripture. We have the, the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. We can talk to God. Our Westminster standards say that the gifts of the Holy Spirit ceased in the first century with the death of the, first, the, the last apostle, John. And someone told me once, oh, that's so bad. <laughs> we have God, we have the scripture, and we have the Holy Spirit. What else do we need? Uh, I will tell you, I wish I could um, hear the voice of the Lord in my head while I was dreaming. But that time came to pass. And I have to rely upon the Lord and upon his spirit to comprehend what he has uh, bestowed upon us and what he requires from us in order to serve him. It is the Holy Spirit, the seal of the Holy Spirit, that prevents us from doing uh, what is wrong in the Lord's sight, from doing foolish things. Being predestined doesn't mean that we are better than anybody else. It doesn't mean that we have superpowers. We can see ahead of time, know our future. We remain here in flesh. Our bodies have not been glorified yet. We sin every day. Have you ever had that sort of experience? where you, you, you feel like, oh, uh, I do not know what to do, but um, I certainly know what to do. If I just remember what the Bible says, <laughs> we have been chosen by God, redeemed by the Son, and sealed with the Holy Spirit for the sake of God's kingdom for the sake of his name and for his glory. Being predestined, it, it is an honor, a privilege that we did not fight for, we did not ask for, but we embrace, we accept, and we thank the Lord for that because otherwise we'd be all lost and going to hell. Usually we don't talk about predestination because it gives one the idea that we are better than the other person. And we live in a very, very, very divided society already. There are all sorts of people saying that um, we have privileges, people have privileges. We sort of have a privilege in Christ, we have been predestined but just like our skin color we did not choose <laughs> thank you for this for that for that we have been predestined by God chosen by God mm -hmm. redeemed by the son the son's work of redemption and sealed with the Holy Spirit Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come again before you, Lord, before the Holy Presence. We thank you for the uh, for Christ's work of redemption. 
thank you for the predestination. We thank you, thank you, Lord, because um, Jesus did not die for everybody. He died for um, the elect people that you have chosen for thy name's sake, for thy glory. Thank you that we are part of them and we can be sure of that because the Holy Spirit has enlightened us, has made us understand what is, your, what is our place and your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be called children of the covenant. And children of the covenant begets children of the covenant, begets children of the covenant. And we grow, O oh Lord. We are a community of predestined people, not because of our own will, but because of our, thy glory, thy will, O oh Lord. We are called upon thee, we called upon by thee, O Lord, by you, O Lord, to do uh, thy will. And we glorify you. We worship thy name. And we praise you for Christ's work of redemption. And for the seal of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.